What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back with my $10,000 fully built 1994 Chevy 1500 lowered pickup truck. This pickup truck has a 383 stroker from Blueprint Engines. It has a 700 R4 from Blueprint Engines. It has 373 gears with True Track lock in the rear. All brand new, brand new header as exhaust. All of these components have less than 10,000 miles on them, and I got the truck for $10,000. Guys, it's got a few minor issues. I think we're gonna try to take care of those today. We're gonna see what all we can get done in this video, and I'm hoping we can get it all finished today. So here it is, my 94 Chevy 1500 with the step side bed, the 20 inch wheels, and one hell of an engine and transmission combination under it. It is black on black. It is blacked out, except for the interior. We've got tinted windows, we've got black wheels, we've got blacked out turn signals and parking lights, and it's a good looking truck, guys. There are a few things that need to be addressed, and one of them I did without you guys, kind of shocked me, but the battery over here, well, the terminals were loose, <laughs> both of them. So I'm surprised with as many miles, I've probably put 800 to 1,000 miles on this thing. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't had any issues out of it. One of the issues that I'm having is the choke. Um, as the weather changes, you know, you typically need to adjust your choke a little bit. It is an electric choke, but what I'm finding is that it shuts off way too soon. Like I can start the truck, it could be like 45 degrees outside. I can fire up the truck and if I tap the throttle, automatically choke goes off. So I just want to take a quick peek at that real quick. We're going to take this breather off, this air cleaner. I've never had this off before. Um, let's just pop this off and we'll sit it over here. And then I'll show you while we're over here, some of the new parts that I got for the truck. The third brake light does not work. Well, I bought this one. This is DOT approved, of course, LED, because everything on the truck is LED. And while you're in there, it's really nice because it comes with a new foam gasket, really important, so you don't end up leaking water inside your truck. Um, next, you guys may know what this is, War Performance. It's a VSSB with dip switches. This is your vehicle speed sensor buffer. Now, some of these come with a DRAC module and some come with a VSSB. Supposedly, in 1994, it's a VSSB module. And if you're wondering what all of these dip switches are for, well, there, <laughs> there's a bunch of numbers over here and there are dip switch locations for each of them. Basically, I'm going to go online to their website. I'm going to enter my gear ratio. I'm going to enter the size of my tires, and it should provide me with a number. And then I can find a number close to that number on this page, and then I set the dip switches appropriately. And if all goes well, you simply take this module, you plug it in. It should be underneath the glove box. You just take the old one out, you plug this one in, and voila. Instead of my speedometer being 10 miles an hour off all the time, it'll be accurate, and that is very important. Next, I don't know if we're going to get to this in this video, a rear transmission seal. Yep, for the uh, transmission extension housing. Now, a lot of you are like, Randy, the leak that you have in your transmission is no big deal. It's just a rear seal. It is, I guarantee you, it's not the rear seal. I bought one because it came with an entire kit. There's the seal. This is a bushing that I hope I don't have to replace, and I don't think so. It's a brand new transmission. The drive shaft didn't show any signs of slop, so I don't think this bushing is bad. I also don't think this seal is bad. The leak, I believe, is coming from somewhere different. And that is from this right here. And a lot of a lot of places that manufacture transmissions, they do not install this in the new transmissions. Why? I don't know, but they don't. They typically leave this out. If you're wondering what this is, well, I don't know exactly <laughs> to tell you. I can tell you the part number, okay? GM Genuine Parts. It is part number 8654063. All right. Um, this fits on like the tail shaft of the transmission. It goes this direction and there you can't see it, but there's a rubber seal, a black O-ring on the very edge of that. And this is what the drive shaft actually slides into 
and prevents transmission fluid from leaking down the yoke. And that, I believe, is where the leak is coming from. I think it's not the rear seal leaking. I think it's the yoke that's leaking. Next, we've got a reusable Cometic uh, C15191. 15191. This is a reusable thermostat housing gasket. We have a 180 degree thermostat because I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if that thing has a thermostat in it. So just to be on the safe side, we're going to throw a thermostat and a reusable gasket. And then my fuel pump is going out. Um, I think it's got a Mallory fuel pump on it and it looks just like this, um, but I'm a Holly kind of guy. You know, Holly has sponsored the channel for like three years now. I'm a big Holly guy. This is not sponsored. Went out and bought it myself and it's not cheap. This is the, the Holly Red electric fuel pump. It's seven PSI, like 93 uh, gallons per hour or something like that. This is a, uh, this is a, it's a big pump. There's <laughs> no, uh, no joke on this. It's insulated right here. And then when you mount it up to the truck, it's insulated with this too to help cut down on the noise. And then it's got the, well, it had the associated hardware with it. Next, since we were on the subject of the transmission, this is the O-ring for the tail shaft extension housing. Um, so we can replace that. If you remember right, it looks like somebody took the tail shaft off the housing and they just gobbled silicon all over it instead of replacing the parts. Um, then we have a speedometer. Uh, they put silicon all over the speedometer, uh, the VSS module in the transmission. So we have one of those as well. We have the inner seal and the outer seal. And then there's this little clip here. I'll be honest with you, don't know what the clip goes to. This is everything that I've got for the truck. Um, to try to get done today in this video. And today is December 23rd. Wow, Christmas is, and it's nine o'clock at night. Um, it's about to start storming. The wind's getting, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We'll just close the door. The weather won't get in here. So I let the truck sit for a little while. I, I wanna kinda come over here and take a look at this carburetor. Oh, you know what I, what is this? What is this? What reputable place? Are you serious? This is the... Guys, I'm not a reputable shop, but I have a box of caps over there of plugs, basically, for a carburetor. Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't think it was leaking, but still, that's... <laughs> okay. And the return spring, that's... Okay. Sure, uh, just just bolted it to the intake. All right, so thankfully the truck has cooled off enough and the choke is closed. What I need to do is I need to come over here and I need to adjust this just a hair um, to try to get it to where the carburetor's choke will open up a little bit later because when it's cold, the last thing you want is this thing just, you know, turning off on you because then it runs like crap. It doesn't want to run at all. This is my first look at the carburetor. Um, that's a nice looking carburetor. It's a 10569, I think is what it says. Yeah, she's a decent looking carburetor, guys. You tell me what you think. Everything on this is just absolutely beautiful. There's spider webs <laughs> literally back there. This thing has obviously been sitting for a while. All right, so I'm gonna tinker with the choke. I'm gonna try to find a cap to replace this thing. That's just, that's, anyway. Um, and then I guess we can get started with the actual work. All right, I got my choke adjusted and it seems to be working properly now. We can throw this away because, well, oh, that's junk. And I put the proper cap over it. We'll take the key out so it stops beeping at us. So what do we wanna start with first? I'm thinking the fuel pump, um, that fuel pump, is quite annoying for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's annoying because as the fuel pump has started going bad, it's started causing interference with the radio. Obviously this truck has subs and uh, jail audio equipment everywhere, speakers all over the place. And when the pump starts making this horrible noise, the noise, like the electronic interference, starts spreading to the interior of the truck through the speakers. Now, when the pump is not making noise, there's no noise through the speakers at all. So I know it's the pump. The pump has been gradually losing pressure um, as time has gone on. There's a fuel pressure, uh, a fuel pressure gauge right there built in. 
and that when the pump first runs it's nice and solid around 7 psi but let the truck drive for 20 30 minutes or so get everything warmed up and suddenly that thing starts flickering between six and seven you start hearing this kind of grinding noise coming from the pump a whining noise on the interior so i think the pump is probably the biggest thing we need to take care of first before anything else so i'm going to start this is super easy i'm going to cut the red wire about right there there's a phillips for the ground wire so we'll get in here and just get that out and then we can commence removing the uh removing the pump all right so the wires are now disconnected next we should have a half inch two of those and we can get these loosened up. They have nuts on the back side, so when you loosen them, you're going to have to go on the back side of the frame, and you're going to have to uh, get you a, a wrench on there. There we go. One down, one to go. Probably one of the easiest fuel pumps in the history of fuel pumps to replace. Let's get this last one off. There we go. Come on, let go. And then this fuel pump should just flop right on down. There we go. Now, of course, because this was just running, when we take these hoses off, there's absolutely going to be fuel in it. And this is a Mallory Fuel by MSD High Performance Carb Electric Fuel Pump Series 140. Um, I'm sure it's a great pump. All I can tell you is that in less than 10,000 miles, yeah, it didn't, it didn't do so well. So we're going to, we're going to replace it with something else. All right. Clamps are coming off. Get those out of the way. And the hope is, I mean, I know we're going to lose a little bit of fuel, but I'm hoping that it does. It's not one of those that just doesn't stop dripping. You know what I mean? Pouring fuel out of it. This must be barbed fittings on the end here those oh my gosh wow oh my goodness <laughs> oh my wow okay that's uh yeah those are going to be barbed fittings and here comes the gas hopefully not much just a little bit just a little bit whoa and there goes the camera so this does appear to be one of those where it's going to just pour constantly so what i like to do is take some vice grips and clamp that sucker off just like that and then we can focus on uh oh man i'll tell you what guys Oh, wow. Well, I can tell you this. These rubber lines sure weren't going to come off. Golly. There we go. Wow. That's, uh, that's something. Now, I'm hopeful that the fittings are the same size on the Holly oh, as they are on this. <laughs> and knowing my luck, they're probably not. But uh, I don't have, golly, wow, I'm breaking, I'm breaking all kinds of stuff today, guys. There's one fitting, there's two fittings. We can set that aside. Let's wipe up the gasoline that's leaking out. And now we need to clean these up. And again, I'm really, really hoping because if these are not the right size, well, we're in big trouble because it is 10 o'clock at night and there's nothing open out here. Golly, there we go. Will it fit? 
please, please. Yes, it fits. Fits perfectly. And it doesn't look like anybody used any kind of thread sealer on there. I'd be a little concerned about that, guys. I don't know. For me, I'm going to put some compound on there. I've got some fuel-resistant putty that I love to use. I'm going to show it to you right now. This is good stuff. Instead of having to use that Teflon tape, this is what I use. Is it not going to... Yeah, right there. Uh, thread sealant, high temperature, 59214 by Permatex. This stuff right here, you can put on the threads of gasoline too, and it will seal it up. As you can see, these are really filthy. So I'm going to clean these up, make them look really nice, and then we can install it. All right, so I cleaned these up, and here's what I found. Hopefully you can see how shiny these are now. Um, the goop that was on it, well, that wasn't actually goop at all. That was the uh, Teflon tape. And here's why I don't use Teflon tape on fittings for gasoline. Um, believe it or not, I know a lot of people do and it works great, but it has been my own personal experience that Teflon tape, once it reacts with gasoline, it, it kind of melts and it turns into this mess. So as I was cleaning it off, it was all gooey. Like the Teflon tape was not like tape anymore. It was like a gooey substance that I had to clean off almost like chewing gum. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't use the Teflon tape. What I use is this Permatex and it's really simple to use. You just kind of glob it on here, man. Uh, don't be afraid of it. It's a real thick paste. Now, obviously, you don't want it to get in the side where uh, fuel's getting in. Um, you don't want it to gum up anything inside the fuel pump. But I, I get it like this, and I just kind of rub it around, make sure the uh, threads are full of it. Then I'll go backwards, then I'll go forwards, and I just make sure that the thread is all full of that compound. Now it's ready to install into the fuel pump, and then... While it's all still very nice and fresh, you can just wipe it off. So just kind of slide your adapter in here and get to tightening it down. Now I've got it all over my wrench. <laughs> just like that, get it good and, good and tight. And when you're satisfied with it, like that, I don't think it's going to get any tighter without breaking something. Remember, this is an aluminum housing, so be very careful that you don't uh, over torque anything. But just give it a nice, a nice wipe, and well, I've almost got it. Like I said, a nice, a nice wipe. And when you're done, you should have something that looks about like this. I think it looks good, and once that stuff dries. It's going to be a really nice compound that's not going to have any leaks. All right, new fuel pump is installed, wired up, ready to go. So we're going to try it out real quick. Let's go ahead and kick the key on. Hopefully we hear things prime up. Honestly, she is a little noisy. Let's see if we got fuel pressure. Looks like we've got right at six PSI. That is kind of a noisy little pump there, isn't it? Goodness gracious, man. Let's make sure we don't have anything spewing out of it. Looks good. Don't see any leaks. Yeah, she's a... She's a noisy little thing. Makes me wonder, why didn't they just use a mechanical fuel pump? Because you've got the electric pump down there that runs up to a regulator. Why do you need a regulator on a pump that's maximum PSI is only seven? You shouldn't even, you shouldn't even need that. And so you should be able to run a mechanical fuel pump. Just run the line straight to that, straight to the carburetor. I, I don't know, guys. I'm Apparently, somebody over-engineered it. But I think a mechanical pump would have probably been the better way to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. We have a battery light on now. There it goes. Okay. I was like, come on, man. Oh, that sounds great. 
Yeah, it sounds great, man. Good deal. Running perfect. Woo, we gotta open this door. That's one thing about this truck. It will, uh, ugh. It, it'll smoke you out quick, ladies and gentlemen. Double check our fuel pressure, double check the pump. Sitting uh, dead on at six PSI. Looks good to me. Double check for leaks. Make sure nothing is pouring out of here again. Everything looks good, it's dry down there. Perfect. All right, so that's one thing done. Now let's move on to something else. Go ahead and shut her down. You know what else I'd like to do, maybe in this video? I'd like to take this instrument cluster out and turn off that check engine light. You know what I mean? Unplug the bulb is what I'm saying. Guess what else, guys? There's no, there's no noise on the interior. I've got the radio on. We're even serious. Like this week at Staples, save fifty dollars. There is no humming noise on the interior anymore. <sighs> that was a big headache that's now been solved. The biggest headache of all wasn't really the noise. I mean, that was annoying, but the biggest headache, honest to God was knowing that that fuel pump was on its way out and not knowing when it was gonna die. That's why I quit driving the truck. I parked it until I could get all my parts in. I figured we might as well just do as much of this in one video as we can. Hopefully I didn't get heated up too much because uh, we're gonna need to let it cool. It's not hot. I mean, I've obviously got my hand on it, but yeah, it's not, it's not super hot, but it's pretty warm. I think we ought to let that cool down before I go popping the radiator cap or the the radiator cap the uh yeah the thermostat housing off so we can see if there's even a thermostat in there because i'll be honest with you i don't think there is next i think we're going to focus on this hot mess and somebody's got like silicon and and glue wow okay yeah we're going to need to clean that up thankfully the interior doesn't leak there's only two phillips screws uh, there's one right here, and there's another one right here. Both of them are in pretty rough shape. Let me take these off. Let's see what's inside. All right, so we've got like glue and all kinds of stuff in here. This is, oh yeah. Why? Oh, <laughs> you know why none of these lights ever worked? They weren't even plugged in. Look at the corrosion in there. I'm going to have to clean that up. Uh, we're going to have to clean that up real good. I've also got to clean all of this silicone off of here. This is what a... <laughs> yep. Could have just done it right the first time, but nope. Let's not do that. Before we go too far, I guess let's make sure this will all fit up like it's... Yep, that looks good. Looks real good. It fits that blacked out look, man. Now, I don't know if this has the white lights, you know, the cargo lights. I don't know if it has that or not. I hope it does. But, yeah, somebody, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Okay, my tools of choice for this job are going to be the CRC QD Contact Cleaner. We got some invisible glass, and I've got a trim pry tool that I'm actually going to try to use to keep from damaging uh, the paint of the truck. Look, this is actually... It's actually working really good. Uh, when you get down to the bottom, instead of silicone, it's like glue. You hear that? I mean, that's... Wow. That's... That's crazy, man. Uh, somebody went heavy with the silicone on this, man. Um, so I'm going to spend a while cleaning this off because if we don't get this all cleaned off and cleared out... Um, this foam pad is not going to seal properly and we're going to have leaks. So let's do it right. I'm going to clean this nasty mess up right here. And hopefully when we're done, this is all going to go back together perfectly and it's going to work. All right, let's take a look. I think I cleaned it up pretty dadgum good. Um, <laughs> let me tell you a secret. As long as your paint isn't going to fly off, uh, carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, 
okay? Take it, soak it on a rag. I already threw the rag away, this isn't it, but soak a rag with it, soak it real good, and then just hold it onto the adhesive. And just give it a few seconds and then start wiping and then do it again and start wiping. And it's it's like, you ever use Goof Off or Goo Gone or whatever? It's just like that, man. Once you're done with that, hit it with some glass cleaner and a nice clean towel. And you have yourself a nice surface that is ready for the, uh, the padding. So I'm going to peel the sticky off the back. We're going to stick it on. It should go on just like that. And then it's just a matter of sticking the new light on, screwing it down and then we can try it out and see if it works. Are you guys ready to see if it works? It blends in nicely. I mean, it, that thing looks great. You can barely even see it. The foam padding is perfect. This should be the cargo light. Ah, uh, look at that. Wow, that's decently bright. Cargo light, guys, very nice. And then I guess the next question is, does the brake lights work? Let me get you back over there and, oh, look at that. We have a third brake light. That is excellent news because I have not had a third brake light on this truck since I bought it. And in case you didn't know, being a 1994, it's actually illegal. You can get a ticket. You can be pulled over. I've got no reason to be concerned about getting pulled over. I'd just rather not have to get pulled over if I can help it. And I certainly would rather not get a ticket. So that was a relatively quick, cheap, and easy fix. All right, let's move on to the thermostat. <laughs> I'm trying to put off doing the transmission as long as possible. That is something I may not even get. Oop, that's something I may not even get to in this video. To be completely honest with you guys, uh, it's already almost midnight, which means it's literally approaching Christmas Eve, and I'm here by myself. My whole family is at home, so. Um, if I don't get to the transmission today, that means I'm gonna have to come back and address it in another video. And I think that may be one for a video by itself, to be quite honest with you. Um, we're gonna have to take out the drive shaft and we're gonna have to tear apart and clean out the uh, tail shaft extension housing. And we're gonna really have to get in there and see what is even going on. It does have a thermostat, really. And then it's got a nice rubber gasket right there. So it almost looks like we don't need... Oh, I just made a mess. That's nice. It looks like we don't need that gasket that I bought, but I may use it anyway. I don't know. So this is a, wow, 195. Um, is it stuck open in any way, shape, or form? No. This is a nice looking thermostat though, guys. I'm not gonna lie, that's a that's a really nice thermostat, but 195, that's a little on the high side. I think the maximum blueprint recommends for this engine is 180, or uh, 190, I'm sorry. So, I mean, 195 is not like, whoa, that's crazy, but I didn't expect to see that, truthfully. I didn't expect to see a thermostat, oopsie, in here at all. So here's what I've got. I've got a, a 180 variety, just a classic old school. I, that one is probably one of those fail-safe thermostats. Um, I mean, not too bad. I'm going to clean this up. It is a little bit grimy down there. So let me get a wire brush on it, and we'll clean it up, and then we'll put it back together. Well, I've officially made a mess all over the floor, but I've got it all put back together. Um, we're going to find out if it's leaking anything. I cleaned up the mess under the hood as best I could. We do have a uh, coolant in the radiator. So I guess she's ready to fire up and uh, we'll see what happens. I really didn't think there was a thermostat in there. Um, sometimes it can be really difficult uh, to get any decent heat out of this truck. Um, let's go ahead and fire it up. Ah, it fires right up now. That's what I like right there. I mean, easy to fire up now. Man, this thing is loud. That is loud. Choke is closed. Fast idle is too high. Like 23, 2400 RPM. That is way too much. Should be like around 1600 or so. Choke is open. 
opening now. I should be able to tap it down. There we go. And she should be happy. Let's turn on the heater, make sure we've got uh, coolant flowing through the heater core since we just opened up the system. Hopefully that's not on air conditioning. There we go. We've got air blowing out. I've got it turned up to heat. It is so nice to not have that humming noise coming through. I mean, it was so loud and obnoxious, guys. Wah, coming through the speakers, and it's just ah. Uh. And if you're wondering what's going on with the Fox body, um, man. I think I'm getting ready to sell it. I'm debating putting those seats in it first and doing a few touch-up things to it to get it ready, um, including a, uh, a chip. I've got a computer somewhere over here for it. A, uh, a, a chip to put in it to kind of spice it up a little bit. And I think I might get rid of uh, quite a few of my cars. I'm thinking about getting rid of several. In fact, I just won, like literally just two seconds ago. I gotta show this to you guys because this one is crazy. It's a gray market import. Oh no, I just want another car. Oh my goodness, I just want a Tesla. Okay, well. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. Auction one. So I just won a 2013 Tesla Model S P85. And get this, you know what the miles are on this? Guys, guess, just guess, you'll never believe it. The miles on this are 269,170 miles. That's right, I just bought a 300,000 mile Tesla. And as if that's not enough, I bought a 1987 gray market. This is a, an import, uh, Nissan BE-1. Yep, manual transmission. There you go. Uh, that one I've already bought and paid for. I guess I need to pay for the Tesla, so great. <laughs> great. Yeah, I think I'm going to get rid of some of the other cars, guys. And uh, we're going to start with some fresh inventory. Um, we got a new year coming. This one is a, this one's absolutely amazing. I actually own this one outright. This one's not through the dealership. This one belongs to me. Um, but I think once I get the chip in it, get the proper seats put in it, I don't think there's really anything left for me to do to this car other than send it down the road. So we'll see. You'll notice there's no bubbles coming out of the cooling system. Haven't had any head gasket issues. And I've had a lot of people say, I can't believe you poured Blue Devil into that engine. You just ruined the entire engine. No guys, no I didn't. I've been putting the miles on this car, on this truck. I've really been using it. And Blue Devil ain't done nothing to hurt it, and it's only helped it. So let's tighten down the uh, cooling system here. Button it up. Wipe everything down. I'm going to let it run for a while. Let it get up to operating temperature. We'll see how it's doing. All right, she's been sitting here purring like a kitten for a while now. I'm probably going to drive this home, to be honest with you. Oh, we got heat. We have heat, finally. Nice. The temperature's barely even up. Look at that. Temperature's still way down there. But yeah, we got heat. That makes me very, very happy. And now, I still want to get rid of this check engine light, and I'm trying to debate if that's something I want to mess with today because that's going to require taking off this bezel and getting back there and popping out a, a bulb. The check engine light doesn't matter anymore because this car is not computer controlled. There's only a couple things that are still controlled by the computer, like the air conditioning. Um, air conditioning is still computer controlled. Uh, there's probably a couple other little things, but for the most part, there's nothing left computer controlled in this truck it's running like a top it's nice having the heater working this is one I've had a lot of people begging me for like when you're ready to sell that let me know man I know I, I know I've already said I'm gonna keep it but you guys know me better than that you know <laughs> everybody knows uh, if I say I'm gonna keep something that means it's probably getting ready to go up for sale dang it's running so much better with that new fuel pump. No joke. 
she is a slick truck. Main thing I want to look for is see if we got any leaks. Good pressure on the cooling system. It's getting nice and hot. I don't see any leaks around the thermostat housing. Fuel pressure sitting nice and pretty. Guys, I think she's good. The only other thing I'd like to get done in this video for sure is figuring out the speedometer. All right, I just paid for my Tesla. So get ready, guys. We got some great content coming for the new year. <laughs> <laughs> a 300,000 mile Tesla Model S performance version, guys. That's right. And I got it stupid, stupid cheap. They tried countering me and I was just like, man, it's a 300,000 mile Tesla sold on a red light, which means it may not even drive, guys. I have no idea what I just bought. And then that super cool 87 Nissan. I'm really looking forward to that one. An 87 import gray market nissan man it'd be the first time i've done something like that on the channel so that should be interesting oh look here we go so this is the box that we're trying to replace right here that's it that little box so that's a factory one and all we got to do is unplug it set some settings in the new one and then our speedometer should be corrected <laughs> This is great. I love this truck so much. All right, so this little, <laughs> this can be confusing if you're not careful, okay? Just just don't overcomplicate it and it's gonna be fine. So they give you some instructions here. Let me, let me bring you guys down. They give you some instructions and it's, like I said, it's gonna sound complicated. So you have to use a formula to figure out this decimal number right here. So here's how it goes. Um, you take 63,360 times the gear ratio, which my gear ratio is 3.73, times the pulses per rev of speed sensor, which is typically gonna be 40, and that gives you a number. My number came up being like 9 million and something. All right. Next, after you do that, you have to take your tire's rolling circumference in inches and multiply that by 128,000. And then you divide the two numbers, all right? You divide the first number, your input ratio, by the bottom number, and that gives you a decimal number. Well, I got my decimal number. It came out to like uh, 0.8196. All right, easy enough. Now that you've got these dip switches, if you notice the dip switches, once you get them set, this is the one you have to set in the position that it tells you on this page. Mine, the closest number that matches mine is uh, 0.81767, is as close as I can get to 0.8196. That's damn close. That should get us close enough. And the dip switches will be as follows. Um, you have on this one, we have six positions. It'll be off, on, off, off, on, off. Now, simple enough, right? Because here you go, here's your switches. This is the one that you're gonna set. This is your primary. So let's match it up to the, it's off, on, off, off. So off, on, off, off, on, off. Simple as that, all right? But I bet you're wondering, wait a minute, there's a second set of dip switches. Yeah, there is. So this set of dip switches over here, you have to actually do backwards from this one. So if this one is down, this one is up. This one is up, so this one will be down. It's literally backwards from this one. All right, so down, up, down, down. up, down, right, down, wait, now I'm confused, okay, like I said, it's completely backwards world, so down will be up, up will be down, then down, down here will be up, up here, up will be down, and down will be up, <laughs> that's how you got to do it, guys, and then you simply take it, and you stick it back in the case, I guess it just goes in something like this, and boom, it clips 
back into place and now this will plug in in the spot that the old one plugged in and although the speedometer may not be a hundred percent accurate it should be really close and the best part is is you can keep messing with these dip switches incrementally to get the speedometer to be right on where it needs to be we're going to take it for a spin we're going to find out how close it is in just a minute all right are we ready i'm ready because this thing's been like 10 to 15 miles an hour off since i got it and that that's that's a little frustrating guys makes it a little difficult all right let's cross our fingers and hope that this works because it is midnight it is now december 24th 2023 all right it looks like it's right on the money i'm not even kidding the speedometer oh i need windshield wipers bad wow uh the speedometer was showing 10 miles an hour and the gps was also showing 10 miles an hour so why don't we take her out let's get up to speed gently and let's get it up to about 30. right there is 30. I'm actually just a hair over 30 now. Let me slow it down just a little bit. 31. Yeah, it's right. It is. It's not 100%. You know what? Let's continue this way. Let's get it up a little faster. Like, let's see what it does when we're getting closer to like 60 miles an hour. There's 50, speedometer shows 50. Actually, speedometer shows 53, and I'm doing about 51. So it's about two miles an hour under where it should be. All right, let's get it up to 60. There's 60. At 60 miles an hour, it shows we're doing 63. So yeah. So it's just a hair off guys not too bad at 65 it shows 68 so there's 65 67 let me get it back up to 65 on the speedometer here that is 65 and it shows 67 68 okay so before it was so far off this is manageable because this is not something that's going to get you pulled over you know what i mean if you're doing 15 over the speed limit you're getting pulled over this if you if it says you're doing 60 you're probably going 63 you know what i mean that is that is perfectly fine no cop is going to pull you over and cite you for doing three miles well i mean i don't want to say no cop but t generally speaking you're not going to get pulled over for going three miles over the speed limit so as far as i'm concerned it's close enough if you really wanted to nitpick it sure guys you could you could fight with this thing until your heart's content and uh you know get it set up to where it was dead on mile for mile i'm just not that guy man um i'm not i'm not stressing over it. it's great to have an accurate speedometer look right there i'm doing just a hair over 60 i'm doing about 63 this shows 65 64 it is right on the money three miles an hour off so yeah not bad guys i'm gonna call that a win that means i can button this up and we can call it a wrap i'm ready to go home all right that's gonna about wrap it up guys i did put some new windshield wipers on i've got i got a ton of windshield wipers guys i i like collect them i'll go to walmart or wherever and i'll just buy windshield wipers i've got yeah i've got more windshield wipers than anybody should have but you never know because in an instant like this an instant an instance it's it's like pushing one o'clock in the morning guys uh when you're ready to head home and you realize it's pouring rain you got thunderstorms and everything thunderstorms in the middle of winter it's december 24th 2023 and uh we have thunderstorms 
I don't, uh, I don't, I know you guys are freaking out because, oh my God, all the stuff. Guys, you see the swirl marks? Yeah. I haven't sent it to Brian yet to get paint corrected. All right. I want to make sure that like, I truly love the truck before I go that far with it. Let's try out these wipers. They did absolutely nothing just a minute ago. Let's just double check and make sure they, they actually wipe. Oh yeah. Perfect. And the truck starts. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, she starts. She runs great. Guys, gals, I think we are done for the day. And I'm going to tell you something that makes me very, very happy. I wanted to get everything done today. There just wasn't enough time. I've got the uh, lock cylinder for the 1983 Mercury Cougar. We're going to get this in there and actually have keys to that car. Stay tuned for that. Here's that little computer chip that I was talking about. That and this. This thing is cool because not only is it a chip, but this is a knob and you can actually use this to keep the car from starting. You hide this somewhere and you can set it on a setting where the car won't start. So even if someone comes and pops the ignition, it ain't going to run. And then I've got some, I've got some settings here. I've got 93 race. I've got 91 performance and 87 street. 87 because you just never know when you're going to get stuck at one of those gas stations in the middle of nowhere and all you can get is 87 octane. So there's our, uh, there's our chip for that one. And then when we come back on this one, we have, well, we got to drop the drive shaft. We got to take the back end of the transmission apart. We'll check for play. We'll see how this uh, bushing looks inside the transmission once we get it out. We'll hopefully clean that tail shaft up and reseal it with all new parts instead of silicone everywhere. Silicone, I'm sorry. Silicon, silicone. And hopefully we stop the leak because there is just a... It's just a drip, you know, drip, drip, just a little bit coming out of what looks like the yoke. It doesn't look like it's leaking out of the rear seal. It looks like it's actually coming out of the yoke. And I'll bet you money it's because somebody either didn't put that specific seal back in or they didn't get it right. So with that, we accomplished everything we set out to accomplish today. I cleaned up my shop. It's a little more organized. Um, we're gonna come back in this car soon. We got some work to get done to it. And I've got a lot of decisions to make. I've got a yard full of cars and I can't keep them all. It would be great if I could, but I can't drive the cars that I have and I'm still buying more because this is the nature of YouTube, at least for me. Cars come, we play with them. I was gonna say F with them. We play with them, we work on them, and we send them down the road for somebody else to enjoy. And then we bring in another one and we wash, rinse, and repeat. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I love the cars. I hate getting rid of them. That's the only part that sucks. But they're, most of my cars are sitting out in the pouring rain right now. That's not a life for a car, man. All of those cars could be in somebody's driveway where they're actually going to use them, hopefully daily drive them. Um, my list of cars that I wanna keep keeps changing and it's just an ever evolving list, I suppose. I was gonna keep one or both of the Fox bodies. Now I think I'm gonna get rid of both of the Fox bodies. I don't know, I'm probably getting rid of the Grand National. There is a lot for me to decide. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there have been no walk-arounds for Copart or insurance auto auctions, none. I don't want you to worry. Nothing's wrong, nothing has happened. I didn't get thrown out. I decided to try something new on the channel. Instead of doing mostly walk-arounds and on the weekends getting cars and working on them, I decided let's just skip all of the walk-arounds for about a week, maybe, I don't know, eight, nine days, something like that. We'll see, eight or nine days. I'm gonna just bring you content every day that's nothing but either getting new cars or working on the cars that we already have just to see how the videos perform. Everybody says that's what they want to see. Well, the proof is going to be in the pudding, as they say. If the views go up, then that is truly what the people want to see. If the views go down, then no, that may be what some people wanna see, but not the majority. Don't worry, I'm not cutting Copart or IAA out forever. It's just something I wanna do. Kind of a, it's a Christmas gift and a New Year's gift from me to you. Everybody says that that's what they wanna see, so I decided let's try for like seven to 10 days is my goal. Seven to 10 days straight every day, 
bringing you some type of car content and foregoing my traditional walk arounds. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a Happy New Year. I'm going to drive home because it is one o'clock in the morning. I'll get home at two. When I edit this video, it'll probably be five before the video gets uploaded and then I can go to bed and then I can get up and come back here and work on the Mustang because yeah, more videos. I will probably be out here working on Christmas Day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.